Mr. Dr. Andrew Holness. Pass me a pass. Don't fear every damn. If I ever militant, so it and so it and. Humble like a lamp. Tell them no confusion. Pass me every pass. Don't fear every damn. Make them no see a one. So it and so it It took me eight minutes from the top of the road to get into the national arena. The place is full. You have a crowd about one and a half times the crowd inside here, outside. Somebody or something go stir up Labour Party and Ness. My Jamaican family locally and in the diaspora watching this broadcast, friends, dignitaries and observers in the diplomatic corps, in attendance, executive members and officers and representatives of the Jamaica Labour Party on the platform. I make special mention of our friends from the Maroon community who are here with us. And you, the faithful labor rights that form the bedrock of the Jamaica Labor Party. I greet you in the name of our eternal Father, who has blessed our land, who has guarded us with his mighty hand, who has been our light through countless hours of trials and who grants us the wisdom and the strength to lead this nation to peace and prosperity and victory for the third term. We are a young nation, but as a people, we have been in a long struggle to secure our freedom, political independence, which we have done. Today's struggle is about achieving our economic independence. Our national hero, the right excellent, Marcos Mazaya Gavi, believed in achieving economic independence. He said, Jamaica should become the headquarters of a great industrial, commercial, and cultural movement. We want to be able to employ our own people, to build up our own business, to create wealth for ourselves. We must have a people with a self-reliant economic base. We must build the foundations of our economic system. Marcus Garvey, would be proud of what this government has achieved today, fulfilling the vision of economic independence. More Jamaicans are employed now than at any time in our history. Our national debt, which was driven up by the PNP, as high as 146% of GDP because of FinSAC, high interest rate policy and loss making public bodies. The good management of the Jamaica Labour Party administration has cut the debt in half to 74% of GDP. We have a stable exchange rate backed by the highest central bank reserves ever in the history of Jamaica. Shout, 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 we shout. have had consistent growth 
And when we have been hit by shocks such as pandemic storms and hurricanes, we have been able to recover quickly. This speaks to a new quality of the Jamaican economy developed by this administration which never existed before, and that is resilience. The ability to withstand shocks and difficulties and recover quickly and even more stronger than before without relying on borrowing or external help. Marcus Garvey would have been proud, very proud of our resilience and self-reliance as a nation and as Jamaicans and labor rights. You can be proud of what your government has achieved. Economic management is a means to an end, ultimately cutting the debt in half, stabilizing the exchange rate, stimulating full employment, must translate into better roads, better housing, better health care, better education, better wages, better garbage collection, improved security, indeed a better quality of life for all Jamaicans. Your government understands this, but your government also understands that you cannot have a sustainably better life without a strong, growing and resilient economy. However, we would be mistaken to believe that a strong economy by itself will automatically lead to a better quality of life. To get the better quality of life from the good economy, we must be active and strong in pursuing the interests of the people. The people in Troy, who were without a bridge for two years. The people in Rasta City, who waited for their housing development for five years. They didn't have to wait because there was no money. We had the revenues from the economy. But what delayed their improved quality of life? What delayed it was bureaucracy, inefficiency. Things just take too long to get done. We have the capital budget, but we don't convert it fast enough into the good services and products that you need. And so today, as we celebrate our good economic performance, we must now create a laser focus on becoming much more efficient. We must remove the roadblocks, the red tape, the bureaucracy, the unnecessary documentation. We must become more efficient in what we are doing. The theme of our conference is active and strong delivering on the mission of prosperity for all. I want you to know that as my administration moves to the next chapter in our economic independence journey, in ensuring you get the benefit of a good economy, we will be active and strong in cutting red tape and bureaucracy, which holds up and frustrates your prosperity. We are going to be active and strong in removing the legacy requirements and outdated requirements which place a burden on you and increase your cost of living. We will be active and strong in implementing innovative ideas and technologies that increase the efficiency and effectiveness in delivering prosperity. We will be active and strong in ensuring that the vulnerable in our society, the poor in our society, those that have been left out, those that feel frustrated, we are going to be active and strong 
in ensuring that they too can feel a part of the prosperity train of the Jamaica Labour Party. JLP cares for Jamaica. We care about the people of this country. We pay close attention to what is being said about the cost of living. We didn't create this crisis of cost of living, but we are the government and we take responsibility for steering the ship through difficult and choppy waters. And that is why, labor rights, we have always been the better sailor, the better captain of the ship of Jamaica. Whenever Jamaica faces a crisis, it is the Jamaica Labor Party that is called upon to navigate the difficult times. And we have navigated the difficult times of COVID, of supply chain shocks, of hurricanes and other natural disasters and we have done it so well that the rest of the world holds up Jamaica as the example of a small country that is doing what is right by its people ensuring that we are not in debt ensuring that we have our own resources to stand on our own two feet and deal with crisis when they occur under our care program, we announced the innovative initiative, first time ever, first time ever in the history of Jamaica, a reverse income tax credit. Some of you inside here already get it. We will be giving back to persons who are self-employed or who are employed $20,000 and already we have given when we make the payment coming up this week 290,000 Jamaicans would have received the benefit of the reverse income tax credit. 290,000 to be specific. 290,912 Jamaicans have received cash back in their hands. When has that ever happened in the history of Jamaica? It has right only no happened in the Jamaica Labour Party. Friend them, friend them. And this is to complement the increase in the income tax threshold from 1.5 million to 1.7 million for high income earners. Over 200,000 persons who earn above 1.7 million would benefit from the income tax threshold. We have increased past benefits by 30% in the last budget and that benefited 236 past beneficiaries. Some of you are inside here but you imagine 236,000 Jamaicans benefited from that increase. And we did all of this because we understand the impact of food prices, particularly on you. There are a set of persons, however, that we have not fully captured in our care give back program. These persons are not registered on path. When you walk in the campaign, we meet some of them. They are not part of our social pension system. They are not part of our NIS system. So they are just there, they're not registered, they're not known, and so they can't take part in the care program that the government is doing. No, I wish to announce that starting in February, we will open applications for persons 18 years or older who are not registered on part, not part of the social pension, not captured anywhere or getting any benefit. They will be subject to a needs assessment by the Ministry 
of labor and social security and they will get their $20,000 check like everybody else. But this will also ensure that after they register, they remain on our register, that they get identification, that we can place them permanently on path or permanently on the social pension or permanently as NIS beneficiaries. We are going to ensure that every single Jamaican that is in need of help and assessed to be so gets the help they need from the government. We care about your electricity. We care that your electricity costs are a significant part of the cost of living that you face. Everybody complain about their electricity bill. Everybody. It is estimated that only 70% of Jamaican households can afford to pay their electricity bills. So you can understand why we have so much true. But the people who throw most of them don't want to throw up. What they want is an electricity market, an electricity system that allows them to pay within their economic means. But the system that we have is not designed like that. While we have diversified our fuel sources, built more modern and efficient plants, we have integrated renewables, and by the way, next week, Minister Vaz will announce the winners of the 100 megawatt uh, bid for renewables in Jamaica. In other words, we are increasing significantly renewables on our grid. While we have done all of that, there is still more that can be done to make electricity more affordable to Jamaicans, particularly, particularly those Jamaicans who earn minimum wage. Because we care and because we are a capable government, guys, one thing to say you care but you can't do it. We are a caring government. We are a capable government. It's one thing to say you care and you're capable. You still might not do it. So we are a caring, capable, and active government. We are active in our care for the people. We demonstrate the care that we have for our people. And we're not just active in a weak and fenke fenke way. No, we are active and strong in demonstrating our care for the people of Jamaica. We are going to transform the fiscal structure of el the electricity market in Jamaica to ensure that it aligns with incentives, reduce the cost of onboarding, and increase options to the consumer. Listen to this one carefully. After the next budget, which is in March coming up, the government will reduce GCT on electricity from 15%, which it is now, to 7%. Shout, 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 shout. Help me. We will. I tell you, you know, I come here for business. I come here for action and for strong action. We will remove the non tax threshold and replace this with an incentivized, compatible rebate of GCT for person 
for persons who use 200 megawatts or less per month. This will allow the rollout of prepaid electricity purchase, which was implemented many years ago, but has remained only a pilot. You know how many people want to get on the prepaid system, but because it is only a pilot, you can only get it in some places, and sometimes it's not offered. Now, the JPS will be required to roll out prepaid meters nationally, particularly in vulnerable communities. LP cares for Jamaica. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, so prosperity start. With simplified, with this simplified GCT arrangement, the JPS will also be required, listen to this one carefully now, to introduce time of day pricing of electricity. You, you know what that means? Time of day pricing. This means customers can benefit from better rates by arranging how they consume electricity in off-peak hours. So, you know, the peak hours is usually in the evening when everybody comes home from work. Electricity high, cost high. But now, the JPS can say, all right, if you use most of your electricity in off-peak hours, you pay a lower rate. So you have the option now of economizing how you use electricity. But it is also better for the grid. Because right now, in peak time, everybody is using the grid. Put stress on the grid. But if you can evenly distribute the use of the grid, it is more economical for everyone. And it also helps with the use of renewables, particularly solar, so you can generate and use at the same time. But we will go one step further. The government will scale up its pilot project of onboarding customers in vulnerable communities through the Community Electrification House Wiring Program which provides households on the program with electrical outlets, lights and switches, and GEI, that is the General Electrical Inspector Certification. This will assist these communities in becoming legal JPS customers. So the Jamaica Labour Party will reduce the cost of becoming a legal JPS customer. We will reduce the tax burden on electricity and we will improve the efficiency of the electricity sector. We will reduce the cost of living to you that electricity poses and we will increase our growth prospects by having a more efficient electricity grid, thereby increasing our prospect for growing the economy. This is how an active, strong, and caring government demonstrates its care for the people. Shout, 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 shout. But more than that, this is now the beginning of finally addressing this issue of energy poverty, which we see right across Jamaica that robs the people of their dignity that they have to steal electricity in order to survive. This government will change that and change that mentality in our land. We will restore the dignity of our people. JLP! My Jamaican brothers and sisters, water is life. And we must do everything to ensure every Jamaican can legally access water. Minister Samuda has been doing a good job in getting the water projects off the ground and bringing water to the people. But I know that we can't do it fast enough. I understand the frustration of the lady I met in Northeast Manchester 
who told me that she has been carrying water from she's a little girl and she's 76 now and she can't carry water anymore. I understand that. And I give her the assurance that we are working as hard as we can, as smart as we can, as efficiently as we can to bring the water projects to fruition so that no 70-year-old lady has to walk with water on her head. So we are going to move quickly with the capital projects in water, establishing water connections where none exist before. However, where connections are already established, we can also make it easier for persons to connect. I want you to listen to this one carefully. For persons who have been disconnected from the NWC water supply for debts two years or more outstanding, who are pensioners or who are assessed as being in need based on the path beneficiary identification standards, the NWC will write off totally the debt that is owed. It's a party marching on, marching on to victory. Live a party marching, live a party marching. In addition to that, we will waive the reconnection fee. This is aimed at giving relief to those persons who are suffering from weighty bills, particularly those who have had major leak leaks in their house and they just can't pay. But there is a connection there. There is a pipe that runs past their home, but they just don't have water because of these bills. But it will also help in the transfer of property because there are many persons who want to transfer property but bills are owed on the property. They would have to clear it first before they can transfer it. So in a, in a way, this is also increasing economic activity. When we say we're going to get strong and active and clearing away bureaucracy, clearing away unnecessary requirements, clearing away legacy issues, this is an example of what the government can do to make the cost of living easier to you without expending one cent more. Just changing the bureaucracy. That is what we mean when we say we're going to pivot. All my ministers have been directed that they must look in their ministries and find these kinds of nuisance and legacy requirements that don't bear any relevance to today and let us move them away so that the people can get their prosperity much more quickly. Now, this amnesty will last for three months and it will start the 2nd of January. We will not only write off the two-year-old or older debt, but we will waive the reconnection fee because the objective is to get you back on the system. Now, if you were disconnected for longer than six months, we ask you to come in to the NWC and make arrangements for payments. The NWC will discount your debt by 50%. And if there are special cases, as I said, the discount might be even higher. This is how the government shows in a tangible way that it cares 
This is how the government is dealing with the cost of living that you face. But we will go one step further. For persons who are pensioners who have taken part in this amnesty and who are being reconnected, if the reconnection is as a result of a suspected leak, the NWC will provide the leak detection service to ensure that the pensioner does not end up back in the same situation as before. The NWC will partner with the Heart Trust NSTA to train leak detection specialists to participate in this program. We care about you, my brothers and sisters. This government is a caring government, a capable government, an active government, and a strong government. We hear the complaints about public transportation and the cost of transportation. Sit down, Minister Vaz. When I call your name, you stand up. Public transportation is already heavily subsidized in areas served by the JUTC, particularly school children who are able to access the service they benefit the most. In rural areas, however, school children, students, do not systematically receive this benefit. So there is an inequity in the distribution of transportation subsidy. The government currently does make some provisions to certain schools to offset the cost of transportation to students. However, the arrangement is not universal or evenly applied. The Jamaica Labour Party government will fix the problem once and for all and ensure that all our students benefit from reduced transportation costs. <laughs> Minister Vaz, you can stand up now. Jamaica Labour Party. Minister Vaz has been directed to deploy 100 new buses that he got earlier this year to urban centers in rural areas. I'm happy to see that a bus route has been established from Kingston to Morant Bay, and that is just the first in many to come. The Montego Bay Urban Transit Company was refleeted with 12 buses which currently benefit 6,000 students from St. James, Hanover, and Trelawney. By mid next year, by June, July next year, 100 new buses will be added to the fleet again. What we do on that day is to vote. These are the CNG buses, the gas buses, compressed natural gas that are far more efficient, that reduce the theft of fuel, and are far more economical to operate. And you know who will get the benefit of that saving? You. You. That is the result of active, caring, strong, transformational, thoughtful leadership that the Jamaica Labour Party gives to the people of Jamaica. You
these buses, these new 100 CNG buses will be distributed to urban centers in rural areas. So they will go to the urban townships, the town capitals. So that will help in ensuring that students in these areas get access to subsidized transportation. But secondly, to complement the expansion of the JUTC service, Minister Vaz has been directed and has started to develop a cashless payment system with private PPV operators so that they can carry children. The children will have a card on that card will be the subsidy from the government that they can pay directly to private transport operators. This will further extend the subsidy to rural communities and rural students so that there is equity in the society as it relates to public transportation and that will significantly impact the cost of living that you face. Again, the vision, action, thoughtfulness of a strong and caring government. Despite many challenges, including natural disasters, travel advisories, and reduction in global airlift capacity, tourism, continues to be the industry that lays the golden egg. We must protect the tourism industry and ensure that it continues to grow in a sustainable way. We support the workers of the tourism industry as they seek fair compensation and better work conditions. We will do our part to facilitate negotiations and to ease the cost of living burden on the workers in the tourism industry as we favorably examine the relief of taxes and tips and make a final announcement in the next budget. I have noted the concerns of other stakeholders in the industry, particularly those stakeholders who are in our craft markets and who were badly affected by the fall off in cruise ship visitors. To lighten the burden that they are currently facing, the government will waive fees for all craft vendors in government-owned craft markets for the months of December and January. and we will write off any outstanding fees owed by the craft vendors. This is designed to ease the economic burden on the craft vendors and give them a head start in the winter tourist season that is up and coming now. The craft vendors of St. Anne have been hit the hardest because of the damage to the Ocherius cruise ship pier. As such, I have instructed that the waiving of fees for the craft vendors in St. Anne will extend until June of next year when the pier is set to reopen. I also want to announce that next year we will begin the tourism work on new social housing program where the government of Jamaica, through the Tourism Enhancement Fund and hotel owners and operators, we will partner to build social housing for needed tourism workers. Shout, 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 shout. And there is more, but I can't say everything right now. As a matter of great personal concern for me, 
and you know my love for education. And all of you here either have children in school or are in school or you are related to someone in school. I am very concerned about the re-emergence of prohibitive auxiliary fees. I'm extremely concerned about the re-emergence of prohibitive auxiliary fees. In 2007, this administration initiated what we call tuition-free education. Because we believe that every child deserves to access education right up to the highest level. So it really pains my heart as I move around and I hear parents complaining about fees. I understand that the cost that the schools face to provide quality education can be expensive. I understand that. But I want to remind school administrators that non-payment of fees should never prevent a child from accessing education. Under this government, no child will be denied access to education due to financial constraints. We are seeing a concerning increase in the rate of non-attendance at school and non-registration at school. And this is particularly since the passage of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is in all our interest to have all our children in school, regardless of their ability to pay. If you keep poor children out of school by enforcing prohibitive fees, then we are also increasing the likelihood of their children not having the life chance of going to school. In other words, we are perpetuating generational poverty. I have asked the Minister of Education to strengthen, refocus, and re-emphasize the capacity of the Ministry of Education in truancy. Every education officer is effectively a truancy officer. And the law provides for the deputizing of appropriate personnel as truancy officers. I have asked the Minister of Education to establish specific truancy officers in all regions. They must go out after examining their register and see who is not attending, knock on those doors, find those students who are not attending school and bring them back to school. The government stands ready to provide the support for those students. We cannot allow students to be out of school. <laughs> For this academic year alone, we are spending $7.4 billion for school feeding. This is a massive increase in allocation for the nutrition of our students. We are spending significant resources to get our children in school, and we are committed to spend even more to get the last child who is not in school, in school. My Jamaican family, I have so much to say. And I feel like the Bob Marley song. So much things to say right now. We got so much things to say. We got so much
But I think I have substantially whetted your appetite. I think you have seen that your government is not only capable of managing the economy well, but our government truly has a heart that care. We create the cash and we create the care. We are therefore the consummate government. The Jamaican people can see that it is one thing to listen to a bag of mouth and a bag of promise. But nothing that I have said here is a promise. All of what I have said here is happening, about to happen, or will happen shortly. Jamaica today is a different place from Jamaica 10 years ago. And I am very pleased to be with you on the journey in transforming Jamaica. Yes, there are still challenges. Yes, there are still hardships. Yes, we see that there are inequities. Things may not be fair, but it depends, my friends, on the perspective you take. If you take the view that the glass is half empty, then you are looking at the bottom. Your head is cast down. But if you take the view, like all labor rights, optimistic, positive, prospecting, that the glass is half full, then you are looking upwards. So I say to all Jamaicans, the Jamaican glass is not half empty. We are filling up that glass very rapidly, and now we are turning our attention to ensure that it overflows for you. Jamaica is in such a different place that for the first time, a party leader can make a speech to his conference, to his supporters, and only barely mention the other people, the opposition. We are not in a fight with them. They are not in our league. We're not running any race with them. We have too many things to show. We have the achievements for the first time ever. A government can campaign on what it has achieved. A government can campaign on showing the people what will come, not empty promises, but you can look on the track record of achievement and make a judgment. If you were to ask yourself, who is capable of delivering the future that you want, then it must be the Jamaica Labour Party. Them no in my leg. No in my leg. Them I put a little bit of money. The reason why. And I said them a leg. It comes down to one thing, my friends. One thing. The Jamaica Labour Party always fixes things. The Jamaica Labour Party always builds things. The Jamaica Labour Party deals with now, and it deals with the medium term, and it deals with the long term. The Jamaica Labour Party knows how to steer the economy and at the same time ensure that the people who are on the ship don't die from seasickness because we know how to properly maneuver the heavy waves and the white squall and challenges that come when you are running a country. My dream, 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 my dream. Good sailors we are. 
But what it comes down to, my friends, that we must always have in front of us as we consider that a time for decision is near. That whenever the other people have the helm of the ship, they run it aground. They mash it up. They create problems every time bar none. And that is why, my brothers and sisters, I continue to offer myself. I not only have so much things to say, I still have a lot of things to do. I have given my life to Jamaica. I am yours. Jamaica was never an afterthought for me. I have been in this thing since I was 18 years old. You know that I have your best interest at heart. You know that I am not going to sugarcoat and tell you any lie. I'm going to tell you as it is. And I am telling you that the Jamaica Labour Party has the energy, has the vision and the ideas. We have the people to continue to change Jamaica. It is the Jamaica Labour Party that is changing Jamaica for the better. Rise to the occasion, look at yourself and say you're strong. You and can't stop you. I charge each and every one of you here today who came from all over Jamaica, from every nook and cranny, from every corner and crevice, to go back and deliver the message to the people. The Jamaica Labour Party is the best choice for leading Jamaica. The Jamaica Labour Party is ready for the third term. And with your support and your help and God's blessings on us, we will form the government for the third term. God bless you. I love you all. Get home safely.